This video will demonstrate the installation process of the Gemini connector to a single jacketed cable. Begin by identifying the kit contents. Each kit should come with the following items. Hardware, contacts, control switches and light indicators, epoxy potting kit with funnel, aircraft nose adapter, two aircraft body housings, replaceable nose with screws and wrench, strain relief assembly, electrical tape, and a label sheet. Once you have completed that, verify you have the correct tools to complete the assembly. Start the assembly process by cleaning the cable with solvent. Then cut the cable end square and slide the strain relief assembly up the cable. Using the cut guide in your assembly manual, mark the jacket length as indicated. Then remove the jacket, being careful not to damage the insulation on the conductors. Next, cut the seven power conductors to the indicated length using the cut guide. Do not cut the control wires. Now, carefully measure the appropriate length from the end of each power conductor using your cut guide and mark it. Then, remove the insulation from each conductor, being careful not to cut into the copper. Next, strip and mark triads for E and F to indicated length. If you're using control switches and lights, strip as many wires as needed. The cable has three power phases made up of two conductors located opposite each other in the cable. The nose identifies these as A, B, and C. N being the center conductor provides the neutral leg. Begin by pairing your conductors as indicated by the wiring diagram in your assembly manual. Once you've paired the conductors properly, fully insert each conductor into the crimp barrel until it bottoms out. Holding each contact in place, crimp each power contact once. E and F contacts require a jumper and a double crimp. Next, remove the knockouts from one body housing half. These holes are used as switch locations and also as filling ports for potting. For assemblies utilizing optional lights and switches, place the lights and switches into the body housings. The functionality and configuration of the lights and switches is at your discretion. Using the wire nuts provided, connect the wires to the cable following the wiring diagram in your assembly manual. If you're not using lights or switches, ignore this step. Next, be sure the strain relief assembly is up the cable and oriented in the right direction. Fully insert each contact into the appropriate location in the nose insert indicated in your assembly manual. Then, assemble the nose insert to the nose, keeping the contacts fully inserted. Insert a socket head screw through the end of each power contact and tighten with the wrench provided. Next, fit the assembly in the lower housing and set the upper housing in place. It is important to electrically test the connector at this time. The assembly process is irreversible once the strain relief is assembled. Loosely assemble the four short screws and washers to hold the nose insert onto the housing. Then loosely assemble the two large bolts and nuts to hold the housings together. Using the supplied tape, cover all seams to prevent the epoxy from seeping out before curing. Now slide the strain relief assembly up the cable and push onto the back end of the body housing. Flexing the cable from side to side is recommended to assist in fully setting and aligning the strain relief. Pour the small container of epoxy into the large container and stir thoroughly. Next, secure the connector so that it is level and insert the supplied funnel into one of the switch openings. Begin slowly pouring epoxy into the cavity. Stop just before the connector is completely full. You'll want to wait approximately 20 minutes before finishing off the potting as to let the epoxy settle. Finish by inserting the switches into the cavity. Then place labels on the connector to indicate the function of your lights and switches. You'll need to allow the epoxy to cure for one day before you remove the electrical tape. 
You now have a fully completed connector ready for installation.